As 2022 winds down, the list looks back at the year's hottest trends. Whenever I see this look on TikTok, there's always a straw bag. What was big in exercise, food, and entertainment. But up first, the many ways work has changed. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey friends, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And as the year winds down, a lot of folks are looking back on the trends that define 2022. Yeah, but we're going to go one better. Today, the list looks back at some of 2022 trends that were intriguing or entertaining enough that they may stick around through 2023 and beyond. And let's start with the Great Resignation, which at first just seemed like a product of the lockdown. Yeah, but a recent survey of 5,000 working women found that more than half want to quit their job in the next two years and only 10% plan to stay more than five years. Yikes, but giving notice is a huge step. So pro tips on making that career leap is our featured story at the top of the list. The struggle is real with burnout, but the idea of leaving your current job and making a change doesn't have to be scary. Fear is a natural biological response. So the way that we tame fear is that we prepare and we plan. Sarah McElroy, a career transition expert and founder of Raise to Rise, shares her tips on how to know if it's time to make the leap. The first thing you might feel are the rumblings. This is when we're really starting to feel that fragmentation and misalignment at work. It could be feelings of disillusionment, disengagement, or even feeling trapped. But it can also show up in more physical type of symptoms, mental, emotional, social as well. She says to explore those feelings and determine what it is that needs to change. If you're working 60 hour weeks and that doesn't feel good anymore. Moving forward, you're going to want to find a job, an organization that allows for greater work-life balance. Next up is knowing it's time. I deeply believe that we just know when it's time to walk away at work. Now, this knowing also shows up to us one of three different ways. You can have that light bulb moment. That shatters our reality. I'm going to have to walk away. Then there's the kind where it builds and builds as you gather various information. That are pointing in the direction of needing to make a change. Or you could just know that there's nothing you can do to change the situation. I'm going to surrender and I'm going to do the right thing for me by extricating myself from this situation. Whichever way you know, you then have to make a decision. It really becomes a matter of that tiny piece of things. We want to be gentle on ourselves, our nervous systems, considering everything else that's going on in our lives. She says quitting isn't just submitting a resignation letter. It's also planning that graceful exit strategy that feels good for tying up loose ends at work, but also feels good for you as well. Just remember, decisions have after effects. And we have to expect that on the other side of making a big life decision, there will be unexpected consequences. Which may give you a bit of hesitation. That's all part of the process and the journey. And as long as you are keeping true to yourself, you're moving in a direction that feels good to you, is aligned again, with your values, your work style, your lifestyle. Taking a leap of faith to a brand new career is at the top of the list. TikTok has become the go-to social media site for the latest and often surprising food trends, right? Among them, an appetizer that's grabbed the attention of so many of us. And if you haven't jumped on board yet, get ready to experience the culinary sensation called Butterboards. With their delicious assortment of cheese, meats, and fruits, charcuterie boards are wildly popular. But it's time to make way for butter boards. All a butter board is, is it's just deconstructed compound butter. And a compound butter is just plain butter with anything added to it. This is a French technique that's been around for like 200 years. Chef John Paul Hutchins, corporate chef for Shift Pixie Labs, deconstructs the butter board concept and shares three variations. Let's start with a roasted garlic butter board. Roast it off some beautiful garlic. Yum. Take these two guys and shuck them and throw them in there and just kind of mash the garlic into the butter. 
So we're just gonna smear this around artfully. So now all we're gonna do is just drop some herbs on it. Just tarragon, chervil, parsley, and chive. To boost the flavors, add lemon zest, shallots, and top it off with some pomegranates for a pop of color. It's fun and a novelty, fun for your party. This is awesome. Yeah. Next, a Thai chicken satay board. The peanut butter base is what makes it a great take on a traditional butter board. All I'm gonna do is take some beautiful coconut milk and then I'm gonna add a little bit of Penang curry to this. I love me some coriander. Reduce this mixture down for about 10 minutes. Now what I need to make sure is if this doesn't reduce down enough when I mix in the peanut butter, uh -huh. I've got peanut butter soup. So this has to be smearable. Once reduced, add some brown sugar and lemon juice and fold it into peanut butter. Oh, that's so fun. It actually lightens the peanut doesn't butter. It? So it's so yeah, it doesn't feel as heavy. Smear the peanut butter mixture all over the board. For the chicken, cover it in olive oil, salt and pepper, and throw it into the air fryer. Once done, shred it and sprinkle it onto the board. Dice up some serrano chilies and sprinkle them over the peanut butter along with some cilantro, toasted coconut, and pomegranate. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Finally, sweeten things up with a dessert board. So this is gonna be a bunch of fruit, a couple of candies, but I'm gonna be using nut butters instead. Load up three separate piping bags with peanut butter, Nutella, and walnut butter. Then squeeze out alternating rows onto a board. For a little more sugar, slice up some pre-made Rice Krispie treats to dip. Pile on the fun with sliced bananas, strawberries, white raisins, crushed peanuts, and chocolate chips. We've created artwork there. Mm. That's pretty. Everything is better with butter. Another 22 trend that seems here for the long haul is coastal grandmother. And sure, maybe you're landlocked or for that matter, not a grandmother, but there are elements of this style that people everywhere are fitting into their lives and looks. Teresa Strasser is showing us how to make coastal grandmother your own. Time to let you in on the lifestyle craze known as the coastal grandmother aesthetic. The term was coined by TikTok creator Lex Nicoletta and went viral earlier this year. If you love Nancy Meyers movie, Coastal Vibes, Recipes and Cooking, Ina Garten, Cozy Interiors, and more, there's a good chance you might be a coastal grandmother. We stopped by my sister's closet and my sister's attic to get in on the trend. That's very coastal grandma. Right with the help of fashion and design expert, Juliana Garden. It's close to the ocean, so we have all the colors related to it. So the ocean water, blue color, the sand, that's represented with the white. I feel like this is a great representation of the style. So let's begin with some clothing staples. So the button shirt, I'm almost sure everybody would have one yeah. in a closet. Leave it untucked for a relaxed feel and for bottoms, Think loose pants in light fabrics like cotton and linen. Baggy neutral pants. Yes. Or you can go for jeans as long as they're in a lighter wash. Are these good? That's perfect. And inspired by those cold, breezy nights at the beach, a knit sweater. Look at mine. It fits perfectly with the style. This is kind of like yours. Yes, I love that. Oh, see, <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it, Meryl Streep. Once you've got the look, let's accessorize. Whenever I see this look on TikTok, there's always a straw bag. Yes, that's true to the style. And in your case, let's modernize a little bit more. Add a good pair of sunglasses, a Panama hat or sun hat. That's exactly what we're talking about. And a comfortable shoe, whether it's sandals or sneakers. That is Coastal Grandma in a nutshell. Very laid back. You're not in a hurry with the yeah. style. Your life is a little calmer. But if you have to run, you can because you're going to be in flats. You're going to be in flats. And because this laid back aesthetic doesn't stop in your wardrobe, we have some ideas for home decor. When we come to the interior design part of it, that's a good way to see the full package. Bingo. The same color theme is gonna be throughout, right? So I feel like the couch will be that linen material. The accent color could be the blue. Or start small with some throw pillows, floral arrangements, or ceramics. So we see that very chic look, but it's coastal chic look. And that's your guide to the coastal grandma aesthetic. You keep doing what you're doing, grandma needs to sit. <sighs> Still to come as the list looks back on the past year. It's something that you can do pretty much anywhere. The trend that got us out of the house and why we can't get enough of dogs on social media. Plus, 
Please excuse Wednesday. She's allergic to color. The Netflix show that killed the competition. It's one of Netflix's biggest shows of the year. All that and more as the list looks back. Guys, welcome back as the list looks back on the biggest trends of 22. You have to definitely include the multitude of people putting their pets on social media. But depending on the personality of that pet and the nature of the challenge, you might want to proceed with caution. Yes, please. Hattie Dijamal looks at pet trends on TikTok and how to join in the fun while keeping everyone safe. When it comes to pet videos vying for competition on your feed, the fur is flying. Obviously, people really love their pets, but there's a fascination on social media right now with wanting to do all these different trends. What is that about? They see a fun video and they're like, I have to do that with my dog too. And I think that's kind of where it starts. Kimberly Vermillion, communications director for the Arizona Animal Welfare League, breaks down some of the latest social media pet trends and what you should know about them. Let's start with randomly clapping for your dog. Why are people doing that and what effect does it have on their dog? Every dog's gonna react differently. Some might wag, wag their tail or kind of pant at you, look at you funny. It really is gonna just depend on the personality of your dog. So is this something that people should be doing? Make sure that you know, you're doing it from a distance, you're not doing it right in their face. But if you're doing it across the room and you wanna see their reaction, that's perfectly safe and it's just fun to see how they will react. Woo! Good job! Good job! Next, making the same sounds as your dog. You know, you want to try to speak your dog's love language, or in this case, their actual language, where you're barking at them. What is that about? Sometimes it's hard when your dog's howling. You don't want to. You kind of just want to join in. No, that's all right. <laughs> at number three, hide and seek. So the one I've seen is where you know you hide under the blanket and you kind of see how your dog reacts. And you know, it's fun to kind of see, like, what does your dog think? Do they care? You're like, where are you? Where are you? Is that something that you could use even in a way to maybe train them or bond with them? You definitely take it to different lengths. One thing you just want to be mindful of is that you're not jumping up and scaring them after you're flipping over the blanket. You do it slowly, kind of reveal yourself to make sure that you don't freak your dog out. Finally, for a tasty twist, there's the Mario Kart challenge. This is a great way of doing like a DIY food puzzle for breakfast or dinner. You're taking food and you're kind of spreading it out and kind of seeing them clean it all up and see how fast they can do it. So you really want to make sure that you're doing it like in place of one of their meals. You're not giving them an extra food. Four-legged friends racking up the trends on socials. Friends, what if you could get the benefits of an intense two-hour workout with a low intensity 25 minute session that causes minimal wear and tear on the joints, ligaments, and muscles, right? It may sound shocking, but it is possible with one of the year's biggest fitness trends, electrical muscle stimulation. The latest trend in fitness may come as a shock, electro muscle stimulation, or EMS. We're producing electrical current that stimulates muscle contraction. And okay. with the suit, you're covering about 90% of the major muscle groups in your body. Doug Payne, president and co-founder of Ohm Fitness in Scottsdale, Arizona, shares three ways EMS training is on the cutting edge of exercise. For starters, it saves time. Does anybody want more time at the gym? No, we would prefer less time with more results. If you think about it, in the gym, we do traditional movements, right? Right. And if you're counting to one, 1,001, that's about one flex per second. Sure. With the suit, we're delivering up to 85 muscle contractions per second. So in 25 minutes, you're getting far more than you would in the two and a half hours in the gym. Five seconds left. Next, it's safe. It's completely safe. It's the exact same type of current uh -huh. and pulse that your body is used to receiving. There's no heavy equipment that you need to move. We're talking about body weight. The suit is your gym, so the resistance of a squat is happening through the current that we're putting through the body. And so it feels as if you're doing a massive squat, but it's really just your body weight. 
It also works more muscles. So it's basically pulsating your muscles without you even having to think about it? Yeah, exactly. So normally our brain sends the signal through our central nervous system to the muscle, causing it to contract. All we're doing is we're mimicking the normal brain signal. We're just applying it directly to the muscle. The suit has pads that cover about 90% of your body and a battery pack is connected at your hip. And that sends the pulses to the appropriate muscle groups at the appropriate time during the workout. And you do that with this kind of technology on this iPad, right? Our coaches are, you know, one part fitness coach, one part DJ. Keep it up, you guys. They tailor the strength of the pulse per muscle group based on the routine and the fitness level of the customers. Well, I feel like a superhero in this. Dun da da dun! Oh! Let's get our workout on! <laughs> Let's do it! <laughs> oh. Turning up the voltage on your workout. We'll be right back. Friends, we are so glad that you're with us as the list looks back at 2022. This year dazzled us with the tremendous variety of TV, film, and music that entertained all kinds of audiences. So Jackie Danker is looking back at some of the year's highlights. Let's dive into all that the world of entertainment brought to the table this past year. There was something for everyone. There was something to get people excited for. And, uh, and we all took advantage of it. Jared Hall, executive editor at Entertainment Weekly, highlights some of the year's standouts in film, TV, and music. We begin in the world of film, where we saw the return of the summer blockbuster after many wondered what the future of the movie-going experience would be like since the shutdown of theaters in 2020 and 2021. I did what I had to do. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness really helped kick things off in early May. The Marvel film grossed over 900 million bucks at the global box office, and weeks after its release, This is your captain speaking. Top Gun Maverick arrived and became the fifth top grossing movie of all time at the domestic box office. And then Jurassic World, Dominion, Thor, Love and Thunder, Minions, The Rise of Gru, Elvis. A lot of those movies this summer really helped propel the box office and got people back in theaters. But at home, TV also came in strong, not just with the number of shows released, but also in production value. Stand with me. Most notably, Prime Video dropped The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. It's most expensive series ever, and it really shows the quality of the program uh, is really there. Other huge titles include the long-awaited Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon on HBO. Andor on Disney Plus and Netflix's latest hit, the Jenna Ortega led Adams Family spin off, Wednesday. It's one of Netflix's biggest shows of the year, actually logging more viewing hours, if you can believe it, than Stranger Things. We are wrapping it up in music, where 2022 marked the return of live music. I think the thing that people were most excited for was just to like hear other fans singing their favorite songs along with the artists and we got a lot of that and it was a great feeling. Some of the year's biggest tours include Bad Bunny's World's Hottest Tour, Elton John's Farewell Tour, and Harry Styles' Love on Tour. And that's our look back at a jam-packed year in entertainment. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. As the list looks back at some of the trends that took flight this year, we have to consider one that, as a bonus, gets us outdoors appreciating the wonders of the world around us. We're spreading our wings and learning more about birding. 40% of the world's birds migrate south for the winter. Oh, we have a great blue heron flying overhead. Oh my gosh, they see the cameras, they're such hams. Yes. In the U.S., billions of birds pass over our heads every year as they make that trip. And people migrate to hot bird watching spots nationwide to scope them out. What do you call somebody who does bird watching? They're a birder. We turn to Corey Lycopolis, the Senior Education Coordinator at the Audubon Center in Phoenix, to learn why people like to bird. We have a black Phoebe here, because sitting pretty for us. First, he says it's easy to do, because you can bird all over. It's something that you can do pretty much anywhere. You can be 
in a green space like this. And you can go birding downtown. You can go birding in your neighborhood. This is a 600 acre restoration area near the Salt River. A nice oasis for nesting. A really cool bird is the Rufus Hummingbird. That bird breeds in the Pacific Northwest all the way up into Alaska, and it flies down and winters into Mexico. So that little bird does about a 2,500 mile journey. They can do almost 500 miles a day. We're standing just two miles from downtown Phoenix, and many cities have green spaces like this. Huge one right there. Yes, that is the gas hawk. Wow. Next, let's learn the proper way to use binoculars. The best thing to do instead of looking down and then coming up with the binoculars, you keep looking at the thing, and then you bring the binoculars to your eyes. And then so you're already looking at it. And once you got your binoculars figured out, look for a lifer. That's the one bird that you really hope to see one day. Corey says many people travel here to see the Abert's Toey. I've met people from England and France and Spain that have come to the Audubon Center just to find that bird. Finally, birding can be a great way to meet people. You can go to the National Audubon Society website. You can find a local chapter sanctuary or Audubon Center. Get started there, connecting with people. Check out audubon.org or search for birding groups on Facebook. And that's a closer look at birding. Wow, so cool. And I can't believe you saw so many birds and so much nature close to downtown. I know, but just about every city has those natural spaces for birding. Back in Detroit, there's a river walk in Belle Isle. Beautiful stuff. I love that. Well, we hope you enjoyed looking back at 2022 with us. I think it was a pretty good year, yeah. and I think that 2023 is going to be even better. Amen. We'll see you guys next time.